so uh, Starfield on Ark is not looking too good. Not looking too good, guys. I guess you could say <laughs> this is the future. This is the most incredible thing I've seen in a long time. I kind of want to stream this. You're looking pretty good, Bob. Oh, nope, it's Troy. How's it going, everyone? Today, I want to talk about why I am swapping out my RTX 4090. I've had the card for about seven months. Um, I originally didn't buy a 4090. I bought a 4080 from Zotac, and the memory ended up failing on it. And my vendor slash friend was kind enough to lend this to me, which was actually just a manipulation tactic for me to end up buying it. That being said, sometimes I feel like the video card is just too overkill for really what I need. I probably could get away with something like a RTX 3090, just rendering uh, files for DaVinci and stuff with the 24 gigabytes of VRAM. I decided to just hold on to it, but there have been some concerns. As many of you know, the melting cable is still a concern to this day. So things that I used to do in the past, such as walking away from my computer when it was rendering a file for say an hour, I don't do that anymore. I kind of sit here and watch the computer pretty much the entire time. And that's something I kind of miss about having a 3090 or 3080 in the system where I could just kind of leave it. The other thing is power draw of the entire system. Although it's not insane and it is pretty close to say like a 3090, it's just a lot for my temperature in this room and the summertime. Like we're coming into September and a lot of times I'll turn the AC off, which means the temperature outside has to be just right to have nice fresh air coming in and we'll get insanely hot in here without me having to, you know, chill out the rest of the people in the house. So my plan is to actually downgrade to this Arc A750 8 gigabyte. Now I know that this is not a direct comparison to the 4090, they are in completely two different leagues of their own, but there are going to be some benefits from actually putting this in my machine over the RTX 4090. For starters, I can actually walk away from the computer when it's rendering a file. That'll be nice, I haven't done that in a while. And the other thing is the power draw and temperature. I also haven't spent enough time with Arc to make it as a normal recommendation for me. I would love to tell more people to buy it, but I'm a little bit nervous sometimes when a newcomer comes in and is looking to just game and recommending, say, an RTX 3060 over the Arc uh, A750. I always lean on the 3060 or like a 6600 XT. I would love to recommend this card. I want Intel's Battle Mage to do really well. I want to see them succeed. It's great to have a third player in this whole crazy market of GPUs. So yeah, that's part of the reason. I know I'm going to run into some problems with 4K video Video files but I don't really care I want to test it out I want to see how it works I'm gonna keep it in my machine for a good month maybe even more and I also want to test Starfield so Starfield comes out technically tonight uh, by the time you're watching this it's gonna be out already and that's a game I'm really looking forward to I have all 1440p screens here that I have set up so I want to see how it works with multi monitor I want to see how it works with DaVinci and I wanna see how it works with Starfield. All right guys, without further ado, let's unbox this A750, pull up my RTX 4090, and then get to some numbers. Alright guys, so the ARC A750 is plugged in, and for some reason I am not getting any picture at all. And so I figured I would unplug some of the plugged in screens and see if maybe it just needs one screen at a time. And it still is not posting, so now I need to troubleshoot this. Maybe I need to clear my CMOS on my motherboard. But this is actually one of the reasons why I do just recommend the same thing I know. Um, but let's see if we can fix this. A few minutes later. All right guys, so I got it to post. And if you run into this issue, there's a few little things that I've noticed. First of all, 
if you look at this, I only have one display port hooked up. For some reason, it's a little bit picky as to which display port you're using. I actually used the first one up from the HDMI and it seemed to be fine. And now if I go to plug in any other screens, it will just automatically go black, which means Windows is not automatically installing drivers and I need to do that. So I'm gonna do that right now and see if I can get my other screens to power up. All right, my drivers are up to date. Let's see if I can just simply plug in these other monitors. And uh, yeah, let's see what happens here. First one's in and it shows up. All right. There we go. So I know aesthetics are super subjective, but I think it looks pretty good in this case. It's a little bit on the small side after getting used to looking at that. But uh, yeah, I kind of like it. So before I get into testing games like Starfield and a few other things I play on a regular basis, I do want to test DaVinci and see how a video actually renders out and also just scrolling the timeline and doing simple things. So for example, moving the timeline around seems to be pretty decent. I don't see any weird hiccups or problems. Usually in a circumstance like this, if you stop it in a weird spot where there's say like a text or something here, it might take a second to catch up, but if I try and play it, seems like it plays just fine. All right guys, so this is my second time testing this. For whatever reason, it would not do 4K, it was doing 1080p, and it rendered in five minutes and 50 seconds versus the 4090s, 13 minutes and 28 seconds. So I was like, why is it rendering so much faster? It shows up, but it was some weird click thing. I went in here and I made sure that the preferences were set under decode options to use GPU and I hit save. And so we're gonna re-render this one right now. As you can see in the corner over here, it's actually saying 3840 by 2160. Let's see how long this takes. So we got about three minutes and 44 seconds left to finish this render. As you can see, the memory is totally capped out at its eight gigabyte VRAM. And uh, yeah, so it's definitely taking a lot longer because of that memory. And I think it's actually kind of holding back the card too. As you can see, the GPU usage is a little bit all over the place. Whereas on the RTX 4090, it's a little bit more of a steady line hanging around that 50 to 60% range. So I'm not gonna lie, I'm actually pretty happy with these results. I'll definitely take that slight trade-off to be able to actually walk away from my computer. Um, as you can see here, we have 1328 on the 4090 and 1610 at 4K on the ARC A750. So it's doing a really good job at basically maxing out that memory, chewing through that 4K file. Now this is a short video, this is only 13 minutes or so, and I can imagine if it was like, let's say an hour or two hours, like a lot of the wedding videos I'm gonna be doing in the future are gonna be very long. So those kind of videos are gonna take quite a bit of time and you'll see that scaling start to happen where let's say it takes one hour to do uh, this file on the 4090, it might take one hour, 50 minutes on the ARC A750. So you do lose some time for sure, but there is a trade-off with that eight gigabytes of VRAM. All right, guys, it's the next day. I couldn't get Starfield to work until just today. Um, I got home from work. I tried a few things. I left it running for a while. There's a lot of problems with it. The drivers aren't ready, so I can't really test it and that's why the beginning of this video looked like such a mess but if you want to attempt to actually get it to post or boot um, I'll show you exactly how to do it it's literally not that hard at all you pretty much just run as administrator but um, yeah so let's get on to that so the way that I got this game to post if you go over to the game itself and you go to the uh, settings here and you go to properties go down to the installed files location go to browse and so there's a little bit of a, a double thing you got to do here so first of all just make sure your low impact mode is off and then disable this right here and then go over here and literally just run this as administrator this is going to take anywhere from one hour to maybe if you're lucky, like 30 minutes. I've been sitting here for about an hour and a half trying to get this to post. I've tried a bunch of different things, um, but now I can confirm, as you can see, it'll post pretty much every single time. So I've gone into the uh, display settings here and played around with this quite a bit. Um, I've put it on the lowest setting. I've dropped it down to even 1080p. I've done pretty much anything you can think of 
in the settings to get this to be easy to run. And as you can see, I got to start a new game because it crashed last time. Oh, it crashed. So the thing that kind of sucks about this, if you went out and bought this $100 version of the game so you could play it early, uh, it's this is something Intel and Bethesda should have already gotten on top of. They should have made this work out of the gate. This should not be like this, but I mean, this is pretty funny though. Jesus Christ, yeah. Um, yeah, so if you guys are looking to play Starfield, you can get a solid 31 FPS and uh a beautiful image look at all that great looks really good kind of reminds me of the old fallout days but yeah unfortunately there is nothing that can be done about this game until probably next week when the official release comes out you just gotta kind of deal with it like this if you really want to play it but uh that's kind of it with this game guys i'm gonna move on to a different game just because i really can't do anything at all with this and my suggestion also would be to not even bother trying to install it or anything if you're on an R card. In fact, if you paid that $100 to get the premium or special edition, just return it and wait till the regular game releases. All right, so next up, we're going to test Modern Warfare 2. I know it's not everyone's favorite game these days, but I still do play it when the old maps drop occasionally. I want to make sure this render resolution's at 100 and I have it on the balance preset, which is a mixture of like low and medium. I'm not gonna touch anything, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Actually, let's turn this to medium. And then, uh, yeah, display settings, I have a 165 hertz screen, 1440p. Let's see how it does. So it's looking like 85 to 90 FPS here. It's a pretty nice feeling. I don't feel any uh, sudden drops. Let's see if turning on XESS actually increases the performance at all. Let's go to graphics. And we got a slight bump. Now we're sitting a little bit over 100 FPS, which is not too bad. But I actually think that the loss in visual quality isn't really worth that extra like five frames per second, to be honest. I would just leave it on the native resolution. But this is pretty good for 1440p. All right, now it's time to try FSR. Now I've heard that FSR can cause some problems with Intel GPUs. Let's see what happens. Yes, looks like that's correct. <laughs> All right, we'll switch that back. All right, now we're gonna try turning this up to ultra settings, which is actually pretty high. Um, I'll be surprised if it stays at around 75 FPS, but this map is quite small and easy to render. So let's just see how it does. So we're actually staying above 60, which is pretty nice. But I can feel a lot of latency starting to happen and it's not the best feeling experience. I would much rather a higher frame rate than even slightly above 60 for a game like this one. So up next we have Cyberpunk at medium settings and we're gonna be running this at 1440p, motion blur off and no scaling at all. So just to see how this game performs, this is a game I usually jump back into every now and then. And uh, yeah, so far it's looking pretty good. We're in the 70 range. Normally I play this game with a controller, but right now I need to get some new AAA batteries or AA batteries for my Xbox controller. So let's see what happens if we get into Night City where it often tanks. So this card seems to stay pretty cool, it's sitting around that 70 range. Temp wise, 2400 megahertz on the card. And right around here is when you typically would dip into that uh, lower frame rate. Yep, we're hitting the mid 50s. All right, let's see if uh, putting on any FSR will help. Let's see if FSR in general will work in this game because it did not work in the other game. So we're gonna go to quality. So putting on FSR 2.1 actually brought the frame rate up substantially and it looks just as good on the quality preset and you can kind of drive around no problem in the hardest to run area, which is the middle of Night City. So we went from about 50 FPS all the way up to about 70-ish FPS on average. So not bad. 
So even though I had a few hiccups and weird experiences, I still am very happy with the art card. The performance in just doing the DaVinci stuff was actually kind of mind blowing to me. Any professional apps, like I wanna try more of that stuff over the next 30 days. I know I only played two games or one and a half games at this point. And uh, right now that is not my major priority, but at the end of the month of using this card, I'm gonna have a bunch of benchmarks and different games to see how it holds up. I'm definitely not gonna run out and recommend it to a bunch of new user style customers, but eventually with drivers and time, I'm sure it'll get a lot better. Anyways, guys, that's gonna do it for the video. If you liked the video, like the video and stay tuned for an update. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.